Hello and welcome to Everyday Aero. Today we'll be looking at my favorite pioneer of early aviation, Otto Lilienthal. Driven by his admiration for birds, Lilienthal conducted groundbreaking research and regularly strapped himself into gliders made of willow and cotton. Lilienthal not only paved the way for the future of aviation, but he also made it really cool. Lilienthal was born on May 23, 1848 in Anklam, Prussia, now in modern day Germany. It was actually quite hard to find information about his early life except for his admiration for birds. Since he was a child, Lilienthal was fascinated by birds and even took a class on them in Anklam. He attended the Royal Technical Academy in Berlin to study mechanical engineering, but he still explored his interest in the mechanics of flight. In 1867, he and his brother Gustav built their first glider. While the glider was unsuccessful, it still signified a first step in his great career to come. Lilienthal graduated in 1870 and volunteered in the Franco-German War until 1871, when he returned home and worked as an engineer. He did have his own machine shop in what was called a flight factory, where he conducted his aviation experiments on his own time. Britannica explains this study as, quote, Lilienthal began to conduct studies of the forces operating on wings in a stream of air in the late 1870s, end quote. In 1873, he joined the Aeronautical Society of Great Britain, where he gave his first speech on the theory of bird flight. In the early 1880s, Lilienthal patented innovation to steam boilers and the serpentine tube boiler and opened his own factory. His products were so successful that they offered him the financial freedom to explore his own interests. And this is where it gets exciting. In 1889, Lilienthal published his groundbreaking book, Bird Flight as the Basis for Aviation, which compiled his years of work in the field. The book included his findings on the structure and aerodynamics of a bird's wing. In this book, he also established major ideas for future aviation use. The German Patent and Trademark Office describes, quote, Some of the findings set the standards to this day. With a polar diagram, Lilienthal recorded the relationships between lift, drag, and angle of attack of different types of wings and recognized the importance of the flat curved wing profile. And he came to the conclusion, quote, Nature proves to us every day anew that flying is not that difficult. That is so cold. Nature proves to us every day anew that flying is not that difficult. This book was massive in early aviation and was used by many of the early pioneers, including the Wright brothers, who used this book as a basis for their experiments. In 1891, Lilienthal began to design and fly gliders. To test these gliders, he got dirt from a canal digging company and built a man-made hill, the reported size of this hill varies depending on where you find your information. The most common answer I found was 45 feet tall, but a published image from his brother Gustav shows an annotated cutaway that shows a height of 98 feet. Lilienthal tested his gliders on this hill and other nearby hills, often naming his gliders after the towns near where he tested them. These towns were also German, so I'm going to do my best to pronounce these names. The first glider in this time period was the Derwitzer glider, which flew 80 feet and was controlled by shifting his body weight from side to side. Next, in 1892, he built the Sudenda glider, which flew about 90 feet, according to the Lilienthal Museum. Then, in 1893, he built the Myhura Rinoff glider, I apologize, uh, which was described as a convertible bat-like design. This design glided for 800 feet off of a 200-foot hill, setting a long-lasting record. Lilienthal's most successful glider was called the Normal Segal Apparat, or Normal Soaring Glider, also known as just the Normal Glider. The website Aerotime describes it as the first serial-produced aircraft in the world. To control the glider, pilots would hang by their arms and shift side to side. Nine of these gliders were known to have been bought by customers around the world, but only four are preserved today. Lilienthal was able to convert this glider into a biplane called the Doppeldecker, which increased the aircraft's wing area without changing the wingspan. Lilienthal continued to improve his gliders aerodynamically and with stability, and he even planned on attempting powered flight with a flapping wing machine. Unfortunately, he would not be able to fulfill all of these goals. On August 9, 1896, Lilienthal was flying a normal glider when a gust of wind hit his glider and caused it to dramatically nose upwards. This caused the glider to stall, and Lilienthal fell 50 feet to the ground, breaking his back. He died in the hospital the next day. His last words before his fateful flight were reported to be, quote, sacrifices must be made. Lilienthal made a known 21 flying machines and spent an estimated total of five hours in the air in over 2,000 flights. 
While Lilienthal's work was groundbreaking, he made a few mistakes that we can point out today. First, the controls for his glider were inadequate and could not be scaled properly. As the gliders became larger, shifting body weight would become less effective. Lilienthal's control problem was demonstrated most severely in his fatal flight. Lilienthal was also unable to find a more optimal airfoil shape. He did find that a cambered or curved airfoil was more effective than a flat or symmetric airfoil, but he never really honed in on a particularly effective airfoil, and this resulted in aerodynamic and stability problems. And his last major flaw that I'll discuss is the use of a single propulsion and lift mechanism. Today, we use engines for propulsion and wings for lift, but Lilienthal planned to flap his aircraft's wings to produce lift. This type of vehicle is called an ornithopter, which have mostly been failures historically. Lilienthal was, of course, inspired by birds in this respect, and he obviously didn't have a great heap of resources he could refer to to know not to do this. Lilienthal still was a great trailblazer for early aviation. His book was massively influential and provided data and research that future aviators expanded upon. Wilbur Wright himself wrote about Lilienthal, quote, the world owes to him a great debt. Lilienthal also helped to popularize aviation through his work. Crowds would gather to watch his glider flights, and photos taken of his flights appeared in newspapers around the world. Just to cap off this story, I think Wilbur Wright is right. I think we owe so much to Lilienthal. Aerospace is a dangerous field, and there are still people today that put their lives in danger, just so we can expand what we know. Lilienthal was one of the most influential early aviators due to his research and his passion that led him to endangering his life in order to push science further. Without people like Lilienthal, we wouldn't have the aerospace that we know today. The Wright brothers might not have been the first in flight, and who knows how else the world could be different. His passion for this subject was immense, and yet he didn't know the future. He didn't know that he would have a museum in his honor and that his work would be preserved artifacts. He didn't know that around 50 years later, they would be exploring aircrafts that go the speed of sound. He did it all for the passion of the subject, and for it, he ultimately gave his life. Lilienthal is an aviation hero and deserves to be remembered and respected as one. So just so I don't end the video on like a preachy, lectury note, here are the top five hardest images I could find of Otto Lilienthal. There are a ton on the internet. The Lilienthal Museum has so many. It's pretty hard to whittle down. Um, I guess we'll start here at number five. Um, we have Otto Lilienthal gliding off a hill, a large crowd. I think this is the first image I saw of Lilienthal because this is the one that I think of when I think of Lilienthal. It just stands out to me. Uh, it's at number five. Number four, we have this one from the Lilienthal Museum. It's at the top of a hill with his glider. Um, just right in the middle of the picture, getting it adjusted. Super cool. Uh, and at number three, we have this one of him jumping off the hill. There's a guy kind of for scale there to show how big this hill is and how high in the air Lilienthal is. Um, quite a cool picture. Number four, this is just a power stance. He's got his glider on top of this like grassy, bushy hill. Just absolutely cool. Uh, and then number one, I use this in my little lecture at the end there, just because this is this is my favorite image. Uh, but he just number one is this image here. It's just the way he's there, holding that glider. He he looks like Batman on top of a building with his wings spread. It's just beautiful. And this this particular one is more. Uh, like a orangish brownish hue, so it kind of gives him like a westerny type look, like a western movie. He kind of just looks like a Batman cowboy bird. Yeah, that's my number one image. It's beautiful. If you made it this far in the video, thank you for watching. I will link the clips I used and the top sources I used, and I guess my script and research document in the description as soon as YouTube lets me put links in there to verify I'm not a bot first. So as soon as I do that, I'll add those in. Um, the Lilienthal Museum website was a huge source for me in this. 
So if you're interested in seeing more specialty pictures, go check them out. Um, thank you guys for watching. I'll come out with more videos soon. Uh, thank you. Bye.